Good morning, good afternoon for others and welcome. Thank you for joining us once again for today's webinar. My name is Payam Asari and I'm the sales manager at Proof in Canada. I would like to introduce today's presenter, Mr. Dries Van Loon. He'll be giving us a presentation on how, to simple, um, on how to simple motor stand vibration testing is. Uh, please note that a version, a recorded version of this webinar will be made available to you all. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them uh, in the question box in your control panel. Uh, Dries will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Uh, now, without further ado, I will turn the time over to Dries. Dries, you there? Hey, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me, Pam? Yeah, I can hear you clear. Thank you. And you can see my screen with the full presentation as well? Yes, sir. OK, perfect. Um, so thank you for the introduction. And indeed, today we want to talk a little bit about um, the solution we, we designed specifically for electric motor um, test stands, um, basically to simplify um, the process. Um, so I'll talk a little bit um, through that here. Um, and then hopefully get a chance to show you the actual um, solution as well. Um, so let me talk first a little bit about, about the challenges of accepted testing, maybe the concept of accepted testing, if, if, to make sure it's, it's clear to everybody, um, and then uh, why we, we designed um, this dashboard. Um, and then I'll dive in a little bit more in the details of the um, actual solution, and, um, and from the hardware perspective, as well as um, the software and the two different components there um, and then hopefully get a chance to uh, give you guys a live demonstration um, as well. Um, I'll probably fill up here uh, the first half an hour of the um, of the time slot we have and then after that we can answer some questions which uh, as Payam said that we can put in the chat um, and I'll be more than happy to go through that. So if we talk about um, the uh, challenges today for acceptance testing. And when we talk about motor test stands, uh, acceptance testing, we're really talking about electric motor shops and you just rebuild a motor um, and now this, this motor needs to be somehow um, accepted by the customer or maybe for your internal um, uh, procedures and, and workflows to say, hey, we need to do some, some tests on this motor um, to assure that it complies with certain acceptance criteria. Um, before we ship it out to the customer, right? So basically like a, a quality guarantee that the, the work you've done um, is, is good. And also from a perspective, maybe some kind of uh, insurance, right? That you can prove towards your customer saying, hey, this the motor that we rebuilt for you or the gearbox or whatever type of equipment um, was in good condition without any any indications of, um, of potential issues uh, when it left our shop, right? After rebuild. So, uh, one of the challenges there is that um, we've seen from, from customers that the requirements are becoming more and more complex. And below there, you see, I put a, put a screenshot of, the, um, <clears throat> of one example of a, of a customer saying, hey, these are the specifications an electric motor needs to comply with, right, after rebuild. And so we're not just simply talking about an, an ISO 10816 or something, saying, oh, just an overall value out of a a certain velocity um, range. <clears throat> no, they're talking here about I had the first one at overall velocity and then each specific band, right? They talk about subsynchronous and then 1x and 2x, 3x uh, and all the way through up to high frequencies. And for each, they have a very specific um, range that it cannot exceed. Uh, they define how it should be measured. And so this is not just somebody who can walk up with the vibration pen and take an overall reading, say, ah, yeah, this is less than uh, 0.1 inches per second, uh, we're good to go. And that's really what we've seen from, from more customers that they're coming with, with more and more specific requirements because obviously they're also trying to um, try to protect themselves, right? Um, and for future, they wanna make sure that everything that comes back into the plant um, complies with a certain um, standard. And so we've seen, more and more of these um, requirements that are that go in high detail and, and request very specifically what should be measured and how it should be measured, um, and then which levels it should comply with. And so it's really not the easy test anymore. 
And so in order to perform these types of tests, um, you require a vibration specialist, right? And most electric shops of decent size, they, they have somebody internally who's a vibration expert and he has probably the, the needed hardware, a handheld tool that he goes and maybe goes and troubleshoots machines at customer sites. But we have these motor shops, right? We have the, the, the schedule inside of the shop that um, needs to comply with, right? If this shop, this motor that you're rebuilding is done, you want to get it out of the shop as soon as possible. So it's very inconvenient to, to wait for your vibration specialist to show up at the right time, at the right day, um, with the right equipment to um, perform those tests, right? So and we're really looking for something easy to use that, that anybody could use. And then if you, if you have your vibration specialist who's going to show up with his handheld device and while the motor's on the test stand and collect um, the data, he can build this, this, uh, this specifications in his device. That should not be a problem with an advanced analyzer like a vibe expert or, or something similar. Um, but then he needs to go back into his office, upload the data, um, go through it, make sure that everything looks good and make sure everything complies with, with these standards. And then if something is off, okay, go back and, and try again, right? So this can be a very tedious um, procedure. Eh? And ideally, if you wanna perform these types of tests, you wanna be able to put your electric motor on your test stand, um, wire it up, put your sensors on there, and then have it run and immediately know if it's, if it's passing or failing the specifications. Um, so that's really the goal. Um, so hey, what we do, what we define is, okay, if we're gonna work on a solution for this, it should be ease of use as the main focus. Anybody who goes into this electric motor shop um, or is part of this test stand operator should be able to perform these um, tests. And you don't need to have your vibration expert um, then and there at that moment that you wanna run your test to, to be able to um, take the proper data. Um, we wanted to use, use our existing hardware at the VibeGuard um, online system. Um, and we want to be able to um, have a pass or fail um, feedback, an instant feedback saying, hey, did this machine pass or failed um, the test? And even with the most complex um, test specifications, as I showed you one example there earlier, and then as a last part, um, to be able to instantly run out a report out of that dashboard so that um, this can go together with the work order and all the other information on that specific motor and be part of the, um, the report that goes back to the customer after rebuild. As so ease of use, use our existing hardware that we already have, um, pass or fail um, requirements, and then um, an instant report. And that was really the goal of this uh, when we went into this project uh, to develop this solution. Um, so what did we uh, come up with? Uh, we use our existing hardware, the VibeGuard, which is a um, multi-channel um, synchronous continuous monitoring system. Um, I've shown you here the six channel unit. We have a 12 channel and a 20 channel unit as well. Um, but as you can see, I have some of the vibration um, geeks among us as myself, um, up to 110 dB um, at a 24 bit um, AD converter. Uh, so some of the highest specifications currently on the market um, and then up to 100,000 lines of resolution. So really a powerful piece of hardware. And one advantage that this piece of hardware is that all the data processing. So if I want to calculate that subsynchronous band out of a certain spectrum, and it was based on what 0 0.3 to 0 0.8 um, orders, it's the device that will calculate that. So all the data processing is done in the device itself. And that's why we're able to get that instant feedback, right? Um, because if I program at these um, specifications in this device and say, hey, you need to measure in this mid harmonic band from 3.5 to 8.5 uh, times running speed, um, it's the device that will do that. And the device will then evaluate it um, as well. And so that's really the power of of the device that everything is processed in the device itself. So there's no need for the data to be measured and then go to a computer and then the computer does the processing. No, everything is done in that um, device itself. And as I said, um, very flexible device. And we have a continuous monitoring um, solution. Um, 
So each channel is being measured continuously. So that's why you can get instant feedback um, if the um, if your machine is passing or failing. And then as simultaneously on each channel, obviously. Um, so we're measuring not only continuous, but also simultaneously on all um, channels. And then for each sensor input for each channel, we can um, calculate broad and narrow bands uh, as some of these um, requirements, the specifications require. Um, and we do up to 20 per, um, per measurement task, actually. And we can have multiple measurement tasks under one sensor. So you're really technically almost um, unlimited or theoretically almost unlimited in the amount of um, measurement points that we select and measure and evaluate. And so therefore we can have 10 different customers with different specifications and have the device measure um, all of them. And then we just pick which one we need to comply with for which specific um, customer. And then the last thing, we're also very flexible in um, what types of inputs we take in. Um, obviously vibration is, is the main focus here today, but we also measure speed, temperature, current. As you can see that, uh, that, that Fluke i2000, for example, a very easy um, temporary um, current measurement, right? And um, so we're flexible in, the, in the, the measurements we take. So for certain specifications, customers want to see temperature because it has to stabilize at a certain zone. Um, they want to um, measure current as well. So those things we can incorporate in this as well and making it nice that all the evaluation, all the um, acceptancy testing is done in one interface. So you don't have to keep a separate and most shops now they would have some kind of Excel sheet or some kind of uh, homemade um, solution where somebody walks around and measures the temperature manually, inputs it in this in the sheet and that then goes to the um, to the customer. But all of that can be uh, can be very easily um, automated. So I think that's a, a couple of nice features here that that made us believe that our hardware in this case would actually fit very well for this specific solution. Then the, the dashboard itself, uh, this, is, this is a custom designed solution that um, specifically um, is designed for this um, acceptance testing. So if we go in there, uh, obviously you have some kind of login initially, uh, where we can have differential between an admin login or an operator. Uh, admin can, can make changes and can make some uh, adjustments. The operator will only be able to uh, perform the tests. And then basically, um, a login page after that to see which specific test you want to do. So you have to imagine this is an, a test stand operator says, okay, I got a motor here from customer Z and ah, it has an anti-friction bearings and it's a standard motor. Okay, that is a specific test that he um, selects at that point. Um, and he goes to the customer, goes to the specific test and then um, hits that button. And as you see there, um, instantly he gets uh, a dashboard with data already showing up there on the bottom half, as you can see. And then on the top half, there are certain fields that um, that are adjustable, programmable, that the customer needs to fill out. And so in this case, the timestamp is obviously automatic. And um, whoever is logged in, in this case was the, the manager, um, is showing up here. But then you see their operator, he fills out his name, the job number, horsepower, speed. If there's other um, parameters that you would like to log and that are linked to this specific test that can be filled in as well. And then in the meanwhile, the, um, the test can start. And see on the bottom half here, that's where the, uh, the live data shows up. Um, and then in this case, we're seeing um, at a different um, evaluation parameters here in this uh, uh, vertically um, written down here, and then the live data um, right with it, right? So obviously this, was, this screenshot was taken when the um, machine was not running, but as soon as the machine would start up, you'll see that the speed starts showing up. One thing is that this, um, this acceptancy criteria typically say, okay, in this speed range from 1200 to 1600 RPM, um, this is the amplitude level that it has to comply with. If I go faster, then um, the amplitude levels or the acceptancy levels go up. Um, so that is something that the, the, the dashboard and the, the hardware automatically 
um, incorporate, right? So we measure the speed and then ask the machine uh, stabilize at a certain running speed, or if you want to test at different speeds, it will automatically take the standard um, or take the, the values that correspond with that specific speed. So taking it a step further, so then we start running that test, basically just start up the machine and as soon as the um, as soon as the speed measurement is picked up, as you can see here, the data will start populating. Um, and, and basically you can see here um, the values and, and which ones that are not complying with. So in this case, I think this was a, actually the one I did in my demo set here and I with a bad bearing on, the, on this specific measurement point here and the drive-in bearing. So therefore we see some increased acceleration um, values. And so that's the idea that you instantly get feedback and that this interface is, is understandable for, um, for everybody, right? You don't need to be an ex, uh, a vibration specialist to see that, okay, pass or fail, first of all, that's only the customer is, is interested in, and then um, which parameter that it did not pass. And you can actually see how close it is. So sometimes it's a mounting issue or, or something else. Uh, or if you're at from two Gs is the acceptance level for this overall Gs. Um, and if you're up at like seven, eight, like in this case, then you know you got a more serious problem. Um, so as you live see the data, you see the, uh, while you're running the test, as you can see, these values kind of stabilize. Um, and then we can, uh, we can pause the test or uh, create these snapshots. And so once um, the motor is passing, or if you want to conclude the test, maybe you don't get it to pass, um, but um, you still want to make a report out of this, this failed attempt, or everything passes, like in this case, um, you basically grab a snapshot and it, it freezes whatever data is on here and stores it, as you can see here on the bottom. And out of these snapshots, we can then easily um, create those, uh, create a report. And the nice thing is, as soon as I say, make a snapshot, then um, I know the data is there, so we can already go ahead and turn off the motor and start uh, taking everything, all the sensors back off and, and move the next motor to this test stand. And so the idea is really that as um, soon as the test has passed, then we can say, okay, we, we make a snapshot here, we keep that data. Um, and then in the meanwhile, somebody else or in a later stage, I can always come back here and create that uh, report. Um, but then they can start taking the motor uh, back off. If I click then here um, in this report, um, you will see that um, I have an option. I have obviously all the standard uh, information that I was seeing earlier, but then I have an option here to add comments, to add pictures, to add detailed data, um, as you can see. Um, in this case, I, I put some spectras in there because the customer specifically wants to see the velocity spectras up to 20 orders, for example, and, and highlight uh, the highest peak or the one X peak. Um, so all those things can be put in. We can add pictures, you can add um, whatever you want, basically you can add in there and that will all be part of the report and will also be saved in the dashboard, right? So you can always come back and find that information if you want to make some changes to it or if you're wondering, hey, which test did we do in 2017 on this specific day, then you can go back and, and find that um, data because it's all um, stored. As you can see here, you see that it will, will store just um, based on the date stamps, um, when the tests were performed and then which customer it was for and then which test that was actually um, performed. So all that data is, is stored as well. Um, and then from that, we can print out that, uh, that PDF report um, directly. And this is an example of how it would look like, obviously the logos would be a uh, specific customer, but in this case, at this, uh, you see the speed it was measured at, at which uh, threshold levels that were used at which standard it, it fell in at that point in time. Um, all the data of all the different bands uh, with the actual values with it. And then on the left-hand side here, you see my extra notes where in this case, the customer wanted the spectras as well as you see here, the, the speed graph, for example, of um, that specific test. And so the customer can see, I uh, they ran this motor for five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, uh, whatever the uh, requirements are for the temperature to, to stabilize. And um, that is what, um, we can include it here. Then, and that's all the operator part of it eh, with what everybody can use, ease of use. And obviously there's gonna be instances where um, 
maybe some more in-depth analysis has to be done. If, if there's really an issue and, and we don't, oh, there's a high G level, like in my first example there, okay, now what is causing that, right? Um, so that, at that point, you might need your vibration expert to actually um, go and look at the data and all the detailed data is still um, stored. Uh, we have the Armadron Center software, which is what we standardly use with the VibeGuard. So all the data that's collected, um, sorry for that, all the data that is collected will um, show up in here. So you see here an example of a test that ran for what, uh, maybe uh, 15 minutes. I see all the spectral data that was collected during that time. In this case, I, I plotted a, uh, a one X graph here of the, the one X vibration, how that changes over time. So there is capabilities of doing all the advanced analysis that your vibration expert needs, right? The, the big advantage is you don't need your vibration expert to be there then and then when you want to do the test. No, because all this data is stored in the background and, and he can always go in there and um, go find out if that specific motor um, had an issue and did not pass the test, then your vibration expert can always go back into the, um, can go back into the software and go have a look at what was causing it. And in this case, you see that my high G level is explained by these impacts. Um, and those were a result of a, of a bearing issue. Um, so all that advanced data is available and um, your vibration specialist can still go in there and, and do a full blown um, analysis, right? And, and have access to this data if, if certain customer want to have it um, included in the report. Okay, but the idea is that this is not something that maybe the test stand operator is responsible for, but this can be done after the fact and said, hey, I did a test yesterday of this specific motor um, and it passed. Okay, we need to include spectral data in the report or it did not pass and we need to find out why it did not pass. And then your vibration specialist can, um, can go in here and, and go have a look at that. And then obviously these findings as I showed you earlier can easily be um, integrated into um, the report. Okay, I think that was most of the um, introduction or the, the explanation I wanted to give. So maybe I think now is a good time to actually um, show you how the solution looks like. I have a, a little demo set you'll soon hear running here um, next to me with, with our hardware. I should have maybe put up a picture, um, but in my home office, maybe it doesn't look that great. And then um, let me show you um, what we got. So here is then after me logging in, let me log back out. So this is our actual, um, dashboard here looks like. Maybe I'll log in as my as myself right now. And then you'll see um, then you'll see how the dashboard would look like. I have here for example fluke reliability test as I mentioned before I can go to my reports and actually um, get all the reports that, that were done eh, on this specific machine or go back home. Um, I want to do a new test so I can go in here and say oh, I'm gonna do a test for fluke reliability, for example, or my Z, or my Z customer with a bunch of different specifications or this customer. No, today I wanna do a, a fluke reliability motor. And you see, as soon as I do that, um, my device is already measuring, it's already communicating data, um, but I will start it right now here next to me, which um, starts gonna make a little bit of noise, but you see the speed here eh, is building up on this specific machine. And you see the vibration levels here as well. And as soon as it reaches a certain level um, and it stabilizes, you'll see that these different bands will also be um, calculated. But in the meanwhile, I, I can fill out um, this information here. Say, ah, today I'm measuring motor 648900. That's my work order number. And I am uh, supposed to run 1394 RPM. And maybe this is a uh, 200 horsepower um, motor. And so you see uh, the live data showing up here and the pass or fail instantly um, changing. And then as soon as this, um, this stabilizes, and normally we have a kind of a warm up period. And typically a test maybe runs from anywhere between 15 or, or 20 minutes, right? But now you see uh, that the data here starts, um, starts populating as it's measuring and calculating all those narrow bands. Um, as you see here, so you see that everything is now passing the standard. And um, so as soon as, as, I mean, in real life, you would let this motor run because your requirements are that it has to heat up 
to a certain um, <clears throat> to a certain level, right? A has to have the temperature stabilized at a certain level. And, but as soon as now everything here is um, is populated and I have a uh, a passing condition, then I can say make a snapshot. As you see here, that shows up here on the bottom. Um, I can also pause my readings um, or so on so forth. I'm going to um, stop the machine here next to me so it doesn't make um, too much noise. Um, one thing here that I'll also show you, see, I can go and edit this, uh, this specific standard. So if I want to put in more information, I can add fields here and say, hey, I want to know um, uh, the weather outside, for example, right? I can put in whatever I want and then have the have them operators fill that out. I can select which sensors I want to use. I can select which, which bands that we want to include in there. Um, and then here actually create the different uh, threshold limits. And so this is really, based on those um, standards, right? So if I say, hey, from 1800 to infinity, and so this is gonna be then 1790, and then I can put in here the actual uh, threshold numbers that that the customer has, okay? Uh, so once that's all, I can change the pictures here if I want to, if I wanna upload certain specific pictures. Um, so that's all possible. Um, <clears throat> then, if if I want to change that as a, as this login, but in general the workflow would be okay. We go and then create a report from these uh, from this specific finding. So you see here the speed that we did the test on, timestamp, and uh, who did the test, uh, work order number, all information I put in, the weather, uh, which I did not put in right now. Um, you see here all the uh, values of each band. So in this case the the, the test passed. So I said, hey, the test was uh, performed. Uh, performed successfully, uh, and then the, this customer wants my my velocity spectrus, for example. Uh, wants my velocity spectrus, for example. Um, so I'm gonna include those. If maybe I want to make it a little bit uh, a little bit bigger here, um, so it's clearer to the customer what that is. I can go to my uh, advanced software, as you see here. And in this case, I have. Uh, that data open, the one that I want to um, include in there. And then I can go up here and actually, um, as you see, I can just grab this shot and then go back to my dashboard and say, you know what, I'm going to include that graph um, and it will actually oh, it switch to where, I, where it is. But let me just go back there real quick. Here is all those snapshots are stored. So you see, hey, today at 8.26 a.m. here in, on the West Coast or in sunny San Diego, um, I can select that, um, that specific graph. There we go. And then it shows up. Um, if I want, I can put some more, uh, some, some more comments with this specific um, graphs. I have to want to explain something, um, but this is typically all the customer wants in this case. So then I say, okay, update this. Um, and then additionally, it will, um, and then that's it, right? Now this is saved in the in the actual dashboard, as you can see here, say fluke reliability today at, at 8.25 a.m. That specific one, and I can always go back there. And then this is very easy. I can just print this page and instead of my printer, maybe I just want to save it as a PDF. Um, and then you see here, uh, this is the report, uh, and then here the detailed information, and I can just immediately save it um, as that and, and attach that to my to my folder with all the um, information. And so very easy, very um, very easy workflow, and really getting that information back um, at that pass or fail, which is really the uh, what we want to know. And the biggest advantage is that we can go very advanced in our um, tests requirements. And so, because you see some of these customers, they start being very detailed in what you need to measure, how you need to measure it. And then um, for different speeds of motor, different types of motor, what they need to um, comply with. Um, but uh, that can all be done very easily once this, this device is set up and the software is set up, can be done very easily and very quickly um, by anybody. That's really the idea that that anybody can go and uh, collect that uh, collect that data. So that's really what I what I wanted to show you, and, and a little bit quicker here this morning. But the idea is that 
we have an, an easy solution and and that's really what i think i was saying, um that it can be very easy um i think we'll we'll open it up here um for for some questions i don't know if anything came in if uh payam or mike here can uh can comment Hello, Dries. It's, uh, it's Mike here, and uh, I'm looking for the questions I got. Uh, just one here that we'll start off with um, in relation to uh, what if you had some other parameters? What if you had like current or voltage? Is there a way that we could we could pull that into uh, a system like this? Um, what we could do is, and I can actually show you. Um, what we could do here, if I go back to my uh, my overview and to a specific um, test. Um, in here, you saw that I can edit, and then um, if there is, in this case, we just have a six-channel device, but if we have more uh, channel devices, for example, or we'll just take hypothetically this channel number six is going to be um, vibrate, uh, is going to be current. Then you see here, for example, uh, this is my current band, right? So you see, as soon as I select it, it will show up, and then I can put in um, parameters, and that could be for any any type of input. So if we're getting temperature, you could say, hey, the temperature cannot be, you would, um, in this specific standard, you would just select your temperature channel, your temperature input here. Um, this right there. So that's just that is fairly easy to 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 set that up, and that's the nice thing that it, it's flexible enough to accommodate inputs and different uh, some of these advanced um, standards that customers uh, bring to the table, um, but then with a very easy to use interface, right? That anybody really without without training you could pick up, and um, if I go here. I mean, you really don't need training to be able to select which customer, uh, maybe this customer, and then um, you don't really don't need training to, and it means immediately loads that specific um, custom requirements with the, the appropriate levels, and you can start running your test, right? So I'm really uh, straightforward and easy in phase to, to perform these complex um, tests that I ordered these test requirements are becoming more and more complex. Okay, thank you, Dries. Um, I got another one here. Uh, is uh, And it's about the levels. It's like, uh, so what if you don't know what the levels should be when you're doing a test like this? What's maybe some resources uh, someone could use to help them out? I mean, there is some standards out there um, that, that you can find. So and other um, organizations they put out standards there and what what I tell um, what I tell my customers say hey or, or or some of our customers are actively using this dashboard today you should come up with your own standard if the customer is not requiring make your own standard um, and that um, because then you can make this part of your standard every motor that leaves your facility you can say hey this was tested against if they don't specify it against our own standard and you will always have a um, a leg to stand on right you have the data to prove that this motor was good when it left your shop um, not only the the uh, the requirement data but you also have the uh, advanced data available and um, so you always have some kind of uh, something in your hands and and it can be part of your um, really nice towards the customer saying, hey, with the, the rebuild of your motor and here is the vibration acceptancy or the acceptancy report, including vibration, current um, temperatures. Um, so they know um, that you guys really take uh, take this acceptancy um, serious. And also you can find issues before uh, a motor goes back to the customer. Right? Let's say something went wrong when installing a bearing um, and it will show up here. Um, it's better that it shows up in your own shop that you can um, put a new bearing in instead of um, having it go to the customer and the customer then has to send it back to you whenever he has it installed um, and then come back to you saying, hey, I think there's something wrong with this uh, motor. And you can save yourself a lot of, a lot of um, headache that way. Um, 
when it comes to real add the actual values that you should put in there as i said before there's there is some standards out there um that that are available um and yeah that's probably the best i can say because it really depends on what type of motor and then and you see your anti-friction bearings or um if i go back um most of the time, say to talk about sleeve bearings or anti-friction bearings, and then they divide it in different speed ranges, what they should be uh, acceptable limits. But I think there's some good information out there uh, that you can find, uh, like organizations like ISO and, and so on and so forth that specify those kind of things um, for you. Perfect, thank you, Dries. Um, yeah, another question here uh, asking like, is there another way that this system could be used? So we're talking about motor test stands here. Uh, but is there some other application that maybe you can think of where this would also work? Um, basically, any type of um, rotating equipment that requires um, acceptancy testing, right? In this case, electrical motor, because that's a very big um, market, obviously, and that's very common here um, throughout the world, this, uh, this motor test stands. But anything like gearboxes and any type of rotating equipment that at, after rebuilds or even pumps and, and other things, everything that gets tested and after rebuild, um, this could apply for, um, or this could be used for, right? because we can adapt it obviously to the, the certain specifications that you that you have. Um, and therefore, uh, yeah, to accommodate that. So, so from my perspective, any type of rotating equipment, um, that goes through a shop after rebuild um, could could benefit from this um, kind of stand and making these um, test stands, making these acceptance tests easier to uh, perform. Perfect. And then uh, I think we'll just wrap up with one more here uh, with this. Um, I mean, so looking at this, this looks to be like an HTML based. Just what was the underlying architecture? That kind of allows the system to work. Yeah, so indeed, it's the the interface is, is indeed just an HTML it's through a web page. And um, but basically, what we run is is internally we we install our physical hardware, the VibeGuard that I showed you. Um, but then, um, additionally to that, we just add like a little industrial um, computer, and that industrial computer basically runs this um, runs this dashboard. And so there's, and once that dashboard is installed inside your network then you can access it from any um, any computer just through a um, a web-based interface um, i mean through a web-based interface through an html page but the html page is running inside of your own network right so um and then obviously the, the coding in the back uh, goes a little bit too far i think for a webinar like this um but the dashboard itself can be accessed through a, a standard internet browser and after this this industrial PC is installed inside your own network, so there's no need for an internet connection or or getting data to a cloud. That is all runs inside your network. Um, yes. Great, thanks, uh, Dries um, and Mike. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining. We appreciate you being here. Um, if you still have any unanswered question, please reach out to your local representative or send us an email to support.na at prooftechnic.com. Uh, a special thanks goes to Gabriela Alvarez as well for setting up all these webinars. Uh, it's a huge help to our organization. Uh, furthermore, join us next time on June 25th on card and shaft and multi coupling alignment uh, with David Metz. Thanks again for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.